Hey, hey, this is Julian, and in this video, I'm going to explain you why we need gas in Ethereum transaction. So let's first assume that there was no transaction fee at all. So everybody is free to send a transaction to the Ethereum network and miners will gladly mine them. Amazing, right? But what can happen if there is a group of people that doesn't like Ethereum, so attackers, they can send bogus transaction that use up a lot of computational power. For example, they write a very complex smart contract that don't do anything, but just uh, run and run and run. So they send this transaction and then the miners have to process them. So it's very easy for these attackers to spam the network and to clog it and nobody can use the network anymore. So they are basically spamming the network for free. So if we want to avoid this, we need to introduce a transaction fee because now if attackers want to spam the network, it's going to cost them a lot of money. So now let's assume that we have this transaction fee and this is just a simple assumption. So the transaction fee is constant. So that's the same for any kind of smart contract execution and that's measured in Ether. So what's the problem here? Well, now the problem is that the miner will start to be really picky because when they will receive two different transactions, let's say the first one is a simple transaction that sends some ether from A to B. And the second one is a complex transaction that executes some smart contract. But the miner is going to get the same transaction fee for these two transactions. So which one is going to prioritize? Well, it's going to pick first the simple transaction so that means if the network is really congested, have a lot of transaction, then only the simple transaction will be picked by miners and the complex one, then they will always be put uh, at, uh, last, at the bottom of the queue and they will never be processed by the network. So we basically cannot execute smart contract in Ethereum. So it's not really good. So the solution to this is instead of making this transaction fee constant, we're going to make them variable. So the, um, the cost is going to depend on the computational difficulty of, uh, of, of each execution. So for example, if I want to send some ether from A to B, then this is a simple transaction. So it's not going to, uh, to cost a lot. The transaction fee is going to be low. And if I do some uh, other stuff more complicated in my smart contract, it's going to cost more. So uh, the miner, when he see these two transactions, he doesn't have any preference because uh, he's being paid um, in a fair way for his work in, in both cases. So we have solved this problem, but we still have a problem because uh, we, we measure the cost of, uh, of this transaction in Ether. So when Ethereum was launched in 2015, Ether had a certain price, which is relatively much lower than now. So maybe that's when the, 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 design, the engineer of uh, Ethereum uh, made the, the transaction fee uh, schedule, then a certain, uh, maybe an Ether transfer was, was cost, uh, I don't know, 50 cents. But now because Ethereum price increased a lot, these 50 cents became 50 bucks. So for users, it becomes really unacceptable because uh, they have to pay way too much. And miners, they are being paid way too much for the work they provide. So we need to decouple this transaction fee from the price of Ether. And for that, we are going to introduce a unit called gas. So this is an abstract unit that measure the relative computational difficulty of each operation in the Ethereum virtual machine. So the point of this unit is not to give you an absolute price, but it's to give you a relative price. So for example, the ad operation had a certain uh, cost in gas, maybe 10,000, and maybe that uh, the divide operation, maybe that one is more complex. So it's 10 of 10,000, it's gonna be 20,000. And all that says is that the divide operation takes twice as much computational power than the ad operation. So we have this relative um, uh, scale here but we still need to translate this gas cost into actual ether. And for that, actually, we are going to let the market decide. So when the network is really congested, so the price of gas to ether is going to go up. So, so you're going to need to pay more, more ether for each need of gas. 
and when the when the network is less congested, then this unit is going to uh, to, to go down. Uh, by the way, um, I'm going to explain more in detail in the next video how we can go from gas to ether. So I'm sure you still have a lot of questions. Don't worry. Uh, if you are learning solidity, I've prepared a series with my five best tips. So these are really the little tricks that are very convenient that I learned during these two, three years where I've been working on solidity. If you want to put your hand on this, then just follow the link in the description. This is totally free. Um, yeah, so I think that now things are more clear about why we need gas uh, in Ethereum. Thanks for watching and uh, see you for the next video. Bye-bye.